All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to week six of Calculus Summer Prep. I'm hoping to do this one in one video. As you can see, there's not a lot of examples here. Most of these are relatively short. As a matter of fact, the one that says expand at the middle of the first page there with the x plus y cubed is probably the one that's going to take the longest of all of them. So let's go ahead and get started. And with that one in the middle, I'm actually going to show you um, a really cool trick on how to expand binomials um, of higher powers. Okay, we'll probably save that one for last. Let's start off with number one, though. Solving each equation for the letter Z. Very important that you can actually solve for a specific variable and know the algebra behind it. <clears throat> In number one, it's not too difficult. The idea is to always isolate the, um, the variable on one side of the equation or the other. So in this case, you can clearly see a number one, there's only one Z. So to isolate it, I just have to get rid of that 4X that's out there. So we're gonna get, um, get rid of the 4X by subtracting it on both sides. So we'll have 10YZ equals negative 4X. That's subtracting the 4X on both sides. Now to solve for Z, we're just gonna divide by everything that's being multiplied by the Z, which is 10Y. So if we divide both sides by 10Y, we get that z equals negative 4x over 10y. And then that can be simplified because the 4 and the 10 both can be divided by 2. So the simplified version of that is going to be negative 2x over 5y. And we have solved for z. In number 2, it's a little bit more complicated, but not a lot. What you should be able to see is I have four terms on the left side of the equation. Two of those terms contain a z, specifically the 3yz and the negative 8z. So we want to get everything that doesn't have a z to the other side of the equation. So we're going to add a 4x and we're going to subtract y squared. Hopefully you can see that. So we're going to have 3yz minus 8z, still on the left side of the equation. But now on the right side of the equation, I had to add the 4x and subtract y squared. Let's make that x actually look like an x. There we go. Now, in order to isolate the z, since I have a z in both of those terms on the left, I have to factor the z out of each term because it is something which isn't common. So I'm going to factor the z out. Factoring it out is going to leave us with a 3y minus 8 equals 4x minus y squared. Now to solve for z, I'm just going to go ahead and divide by everything that's left in that parentheses since the z is being multiplied by the quantity of 3y minus 8. So we're going to have z equals 4x minus y squared divided by 3y minus 8. And nothing there simplifies, so that is the final answer. All right, so we have solved for z in the first two um, problems. Now, these ones that say miscellaneous, again, I'm going to skip the one that says expand here and come back to that at the very end of the video. These next two should not be very difficult. Simplifying just means I'm going to multiply or distribute the x to the 3 halves into the parentheses. And the biggest thing here is to remember that when you multiply things with common bases and they all have x as a base, you add the exponents together. So... When I distribute, don't forget, I have to distribute the um, x to the 3 halves to each piece. Okay, I don't personally like writing those arrows, but I think for visualization, it's good here. And also remember that the exponent on the first x, because you don't see it written there, is understood to be a 1. Very important. It's also going to be very important when it comes to calculus that you're going to need to be able to add and subtract 1 from fractions very easily. All right, so let's go ahead and distribute. So we're going to have x to the 3 halves times x to the first. Well, if I add 3 halves plus 1, I'm really adding 2 halves to 3 halves, so we really get x to the 5 halves. Remember, you can change 1 into any fraction by putting the same number over itself. So since I needed a common denominator, I made it 2 over 2. All right. The second one, which is really nice because it already has a common denominator, it's x to the 3 halves times x to the 5 halves. Well, if I add 3 halves and 5 halves, we get 8 halves, but 8 halves is the same as 4. So we're going to have x to the 4th power. What that dot's doing there, let me get rid of that real quick. 
and then in the last one, subtracting, we got x to the 3 halves times x to the um, second power. Again, adding those two things, it means I have to have a common denominator. 2 in terms of halves is 4 over 2, or 4 halves. So I'm going to have x to the 7 halves. And that is simplified. Okay, eliminating the parameter, this goes back to our parametrics um, that we would have done in pre-calculus. Not a very difficult thing to do. This is going to be much more important for the people who are taking BC calculus in some form. Eliminating the parameter just basically means we want to get rid of T out of those equations and put it into one equation. Well, in order to get rid of the T, you have to solve one of the equations for T. In this case, personally, I think that the easier one to solve for T is that one because all I have to do is divide both sides by 2. So we're going to get that from this we're going to get that t equals y divided by 2. Now I can take that equation the y divided by 2 and I can substitute it in here for t because y divided by 2 is equivalent to t and I'm going to get rid of my parameter. So we're going to have x equals y divided by 2 squared plus 3. A lot of times, if possible, we want to try and solve these for y. This one is not going to be easily solved for y without using plus and minus square roots. So what that tells me is, one, this is not really a function in terms of x and y. It is a function in parametrics. It's not a function in terms of x and y. But we can go ahead and just simplify this real quick. If we square y over 2, we're going to get y squared over 4 plus 3, which could be written as x equals 1 fourth y squared plus 3. And while it did not ask us to figure this part out, that is a parabola which opens sideways. Okay, let's go on to the next page. Okay, expand and simplify. So we need to go through a little bit of notation here for those of you who have not seen this notation. This thing is a Greek sigma. It's a capital sigma. And in math, it means to sum or to add up. So when you see that symbol, that's what it means. We're going to add up some things. So now let's talk about the pieces here. This piece right here, that n right there is what's called the index. Okay, it's called the index because that's telling you um, what the variable is in your sum that you're actually going to be doing something with. Basically, it's the start of your counter. So the counter right here starts at zero. That number right there tells you where we're going to start. And the number on the top here, hopefully you can figure that out, tells you where you're going to finish. And again, those are indices. Those are counters. Basically, it means Every whole number from 0 to 4 is going to get plugged in to this thing right here. And then we're going to add up the results. So let's go ahead and do that. If I start with 0, it's going to give us 0 squared over 2. It's supposed to be a 0. 0. There we go. And then I'm going to kick the counter up by 1. So now I'm going to go to 1. So it's going to be 1 squared divided by 2. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm plugging 0 and then 1, and then I'm going to plug 2 in for n, and then 3 in for n, and then 4 in for n, and then we'll be done. So now we're up to 2, so we'll do 2 squared divided by 2, and then 3 squared divided by 2, and then 4 squared divided by 2. So we can go ahead and simplify this. 0 squared is 0, divided by 2 is still 0. 1 squared is 1, divided by 2 is um, 1 half. 2 squared is 4, divided by 2 is 2, but I'm actually going to leave it in terms of halves, and you'll see why in a second here. So it's 4 halves. The next one is going to give us 9 halves. And then the last one is going to give us 16 halves. Now, why didn't I simplify the 4 over the 2 and the 16 over 2? I could have. But I wanted to leave it this way just because this way I have all common denominators. So all I have to do now is add the numerators. So I'm going to get 0, which is just 0, 
and then 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 9 is 14, plus 16 is going to be 30, so we get 30 over 2, or 15. Okay, that is the sum of n squared over 2 as n goes from 0 to 4. Okay, same exact idea in number 2. Biggest thing is we have this um, factorial here. And if you've watched the videos that we've already done before, you will have seen at least a factorial and how they work. Um, just a reminder that a factorial is some, whatever the number is multiplied by all the whole numbers all the way down to 1. So let's just go ahead and write out the sum longhand first. So we're going to get 1 over. Now notice that the index here starts with n equals 0. By the way, you cannot start with a number less than 0. You cannot start with negative 1 or negative 2 um, for these sums. Um, and they have to be whole numbers. You don't count by, you know, you don't start at 1.2 and then count to 2.2 and then 3.2. They've got to be whole numbers. All right, so the sum here is going to start at 1. So I'm going to get 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, and then I'm going to stop at 3 because that's what the top number tells me, 1 over 3 factorial. Okay, so now let's go ahead and simplify. 1 factorial is just 1. Okay, there are no other whole numbers to divide by, I mean to multiply by. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, and 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So now simplifying, we get 1 plus 1 half, and then 3 times 2 times 1 is a 6, so plus 1 sixth. So now we have to put everything into common denominators of 6. 1 in terms of 6 is 6 over 6. A half is 3 over 6. And 3 over 6 is 3 over 6. So now it looks like I get 6 plus 3 plus 3, which is going to give me 12 over 6 which is 2. And that is that sum. And these sums are going to play um, a big role in both calculus A, B, and B, C, probably more so in B, C, but you will need to know how the, what the sum symbol is and how they work um, specifically in A, B when you're, with, well, it's called a Riemann sum. I'm getting way ahead of myself there. Um, the factorial part probably really won't play a, a role unless you're taking BC. All right, now let's go back. This one's kind of cool. It's not fun to do necessarily, but it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, <coughs> so remember that expanding X plus Y cubed doesn't mean X cubed plus Y cubed. That doesn't work. What it really means is you have to do X plus Y times X plus Y times x plus y. That is the definition of cubing something. You multiply it by itself three times. So in this case, we'd have to actually multiply the first two pieces together, and then whatever we get, we multiply it by the last one. So let's go ahead and do it the long way first. Then I'll show you the shortcut and how it works. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I square or multiply x plus y times x plus y, foiling that, we get x squared. Okay, x, y on the outsides. And xy on the insides is going to give me two xy's. And then multiplying last times last gives you y squared. And then we're going to have to multiply that by another x plus y. So now we're going to use the distributive property. Multiply every single piece by x. So I'm going to multiply that one by x, that one by x, and that one by x. So we're going to get x cubed plus 2x squared y plus x y squared. Now I have to multiply every piece by the y. So I'm going to use a different color here to hopefully this won't get too ugly. Multiply that one, multiply that one, multiply that one. So now we're going to get x squared y plus 2x y squared plus y cubed. And now we can go ahead and combine any kind of like terms that we have. I've got 2x squared y plus another x squared y. That's going to give me a 3x squared y. Probably should have started with the x cubed. I only have one of those. 
Okay, I'm going to have an xy squared, two xy squareds, which gives me three xy squareds. And then we have just a y cubed on the end. Okay, not exactly horrible to um, go ahead and expand that, but there is an easier way. And this is a really cool thing to do. So here's what you have to know. There's this thing called Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle. And what it does is it allows us to come up with these coefficients. So the coefficient here is one and the coefficient here is three. The coefficient here is three. The coefficient here is one by simply looking at a triangle. So here's how the triangle works. Start with one at the top. As I go down the sides, all of the outsides are always going to be one. So I'm going to go ahead and create a one and a one. As you can see, I'm creating a triangle. The outside next pieces are one and one. But the inside piece right here is the sum of the two that's right above it. Well, one plus one is two. So I get a two there. Okay, along the outsides, I'm going to have a one and a one. Now the sum of the inside pieces, this thing adds up one plus two, that's three. And these two pieces, two plus one is also three. Okay, if you're following the triangle, on the outsides, I'm going to have a 1 and a 1. Okay, adding these two, and then adding these two, and then adding these two will give us the next pieces of the triangle. So I'm going to get 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4. What this is doing is this is giving us all of the coefficients. <clears throat> so this right here corresponds to something raised to the zeroth power zero power and that should make sense if you raise something to the zero you get one <clears throat> so any binomial raised to the zero power like x plus y to the zero power is one the next line is going to give us something raised to the first power so x plus y to the first power just gives us x plus y the coefficients would be one in front of the x one in front of the y so the next one's where it starts to get pretty cool. This one right here, as you would imagine, is the second power. If I were to take x plus y and raise it to the second power, which is kind of what we did, see if I can do this without making a huge mess, that's what we did right here where we squared something. Well, you can look and see that the coefficients were 1, 2, and then 1. 1, 2, and then 1. Those are given to us. And the next one, which is actually what we did for our cube, this is something raised to the third power. The coefficients are 1, 3, 3, and 1. That's exactly what we had here. 1, 3, 3, and then 1. And the concept is those are the coefficients of each term. In order to figure out the variables, this part isn't that difficult either. If I have, and what we had here was x plus y cubed, the variables must always add up to a, um, to a third power. So it's pretty simple. The first one is just going to be x cubed. The next one, well, I'm going to raise, or excuse me, I'm going to reduce the power of the x by 1. But I still have to have the other variable, so that's y. Now I've got x squared y to the first. The two variables still add up to a power of 3. Okay, the next one is going to be reduce the x variable by 1, so now I'm down to x to the first. Well, that means that the y now has to have a second power in order for them to all add up to a 3. And then the last term is y cubed. The only thing I need to do now is I need to fill in the coefficients. Well, the first one is 1, the next one is 3, the next one is 3, the last one is 1. And that is exactly what we came up with over here. Just a bit of a shortcut in, in order to do it. Kind of a cool thing. So if I asked you to find x plus y to the seventh power, as long as you can draw Pascal's triangle out and do the sums correctly, it's really pretty easy to go ahead and expand. Okay, that's it. Kept it to just under 20 minutes. Um, that's the only video for this lesson, so you should have enough to uh, practice.